Hello, my name is Elizabeth Baker. I'm a storyteller. My tale today is all about a man who had the most incredible vision and how he then set about turning that vision into reality. It's the story of Saltburn by the Sea and the man who decided to have it built. So make yourselves comfortable. Get ready for a tale to take you away. Henry Pease had had a vision. He really had. It wasn't just the heat. He'd been staying with his brother Joseph and his family in their clifftop house at Mask by the Sea. Oh, the sea looked so beautiful that afternoon. And so Henry decided he would take the walk along to the small hamlet of Saltburn. The Pease family owned ironstone mines in the area. So Henry knew about Saltburn and all the stories about how it used to be home to smugglers. It was so good to be beside the sea and away from all the bustle and noise of his hometown of Darlington. There was a cool sea breeze blowing as Henry walked and he quickly made it to the hamlet. There was nothing there really, just a smattering of houses and a beautiful secluded glen with a deep gorge with a beck that ran down to the river. Henry sat down in amongst the long sea grass and let it prickle against his arms and the sun warmed his face and he took a long deep breath of the beautiful sea air. And that's when it happened. Suddenly, on the cliff top in front of him, a town appeared. The most beautiful town and gardens where the secluded glen were. Gorgeous gardens. In fact, the whole thing looked a bit like the description of the holy city in the Bible that Henry had read. And then as quickly as it was there, it was gone. And Henry leapt up. He had a plan. He raced a pack to his brother's house. Joseph and his wife were startled when Henry came bursting into the dining room late for dinner, looking tired and hot and a little bit wild. They'd worried when he hadn't come home in time for the gong for dinner and now here he was looking extremely wild about the eyes standing in their dining room. He almost upset a glass as he clattered down into his seat at the table and then started to excitedly tell them all about his vision and what had happened. And I'm going to build it, he said, and the railway will come all the way out to it so that people can enjoy the sea air just as I have. Joseph nodded and said, you mean the smuggling hamlet of Saltburn? It's just farmland, isn't it? The farmers grow oats and beans and turnips and I think most of it belongs to Lord Setland. We'd have to approach him to purchase the land. Excellent, Henry said, and we'll name the hotel after him. Emma Pease raised her eyebrows at her brother. Her brother-in-law had had far too much sun, she thought. But you know what? Henry made good on his vision. He and his brother set up a company and they purchased the land from Lord Zetland and they instructed someone to begin to design the town. Their next job was to approach their fellow board members of the Stockton and Darlington Railway and to persuade them to extend the line out to Saltburn. It wasn't easy. Some of the board members weren't at all keen on the idea. In fact, one, Mr George Morley of Gisborough, described Saltburn as a nasty, bleak, cold place where the sands were horrible. But Henry didn't give in. And eventually the line was extended and the plans for the town were approved. Henry decided that the houses should all have the same sort of roof line, that they should all be built with peas bricks and that every house should have a sea view. And the streets on the cliff top were all named after jewels, just as the streets and the walls were in the Holy City in the Bible. The Zetland Hotel was indeed built and it had its own private platform for the railway. 
and that secluded glen, well, it was transformed into the most beautiful gardens. Henry had an iron pier built, the first of its kind on the northeast coast. It stretched for metres and metres out into the sea so that the Victorian people who promenaded on it felt like they were almost walking on water. A band regularly played on the pier and there were cafes and ice cream kiosks and even a theatre. And steamers ran from the end of the pier. At first they took people to and from Middlesbrough and then later to Hartlepool and even to Scarborough. And the whole of the pier was lit with gas lights so that on a night time it sparkled like jewels in the water. It was gorgeous. The pier wasn't the only ingenious thing that Henry had built. There was a huge drop from the cliff top where the houses were down to the beach and whilst it might be possible to walk, Henry knew that Victorian ladies and gentlemen certainly weren't going to make that slightly perilous journey down. So he instructed someone to design a hoist, a huge wooden structure that made the 120 foot drop from the cliff top down to the beach. A cage carried up to 20 people at a time up and down from the cliff to the beach. And it was designed so cleverly, it used water to counterbalance the weight and the water was risen or lowered to make the cage go up and down. I'm quite sure that those first people who made that journey must have been a little bit unnerved, but it proved very, very popular. Henry Pease's vision, well, it came to pass. The town of Saltburn by the Sea became a Victorian resort to rival Harrogate and Bath. And it was a beautiful place. And if you go to Saltburn today and you look carefully, well, you can still find the bricks that have his name, Pease, on them. Henry Pease's name still runs through the heart of Saltburn, just like rock.